sports films have a special place among audiences. Stories that really amped us up and taught us the value of teamwork, leadership, and honor. Countless trials, admirable perseverance, and words of wisdom are just a few of the reasons this genre is in a league all its own. But every great athlete had someone to motivate them behind the scenes, the coaches. Today, we want to look at some of these coaches, who did their best for their athletes, and who had an ulterior motive. Before we begin, if you're a fan of sports movies, I want to quickly plug our new Timeline Sports channel. We just released Sports Movie Villains Evil to Most Evil, and we have a lot more planned. So do us a huge solid and subscribe if you're a fan of sports movies, and let us know what else you want to see over there. Check out the link in the description. Anyway, I'm Tom with Wicked Binge, and this is Movie Coaching is good to evil. For this list, we'll be covering some of the more notable coaches we felt earned a spot in the sports filmography. Some will be classics and some will be comedies. As usual, we'll be starting with the most pure and noble character and working our way down. These characters are the good. Herman Boone, played by the renowned Denzel Washington, gets our gold medal for most good movie coach. The film, Remember the Titans, is based on the true story of this man and how he came to coach in Virginia. We had to rank him first on our list, not only because this is a biographical account, but because the events in this film are hard hitting. Boone not only had to worry about turning this team into respectable athletes and men, but he had to do it while being threatened from all sides simply for the color of his skin. He was a role model for the team because he showed them perseverance and determination both on and off the field making it clear that quitting is never an option and everything worth having is worth trudging through mud and heartache for. Within his first moments interacting with the team, Boone makes it crystal clear that he won't tolerate anyone giving less than 100%. If you survive camp, you will be on the team. And he maintains his optimism and great leadership regardless of everything thrown at him. Michael Mickey Goldmill gets the silver medal. The Rocky movies are well known, having been parodied a number of times since their release and been an inspiration for many films to follow. Mickey was an exceptionally well-written character. He led Rocky through some of his toughest fights and pushed for the fighter to be his best. Even after his passing, Rocky saw the man as an inspiration and we're given a few flashbacks that feature the old coach. He gets one of the highest spots on our list because Mickey wasn't just a trainer for Rocky. He saw the fighter as his son, telling Rocky he wanted to make sure the man could thrive both in the ring and out. He expressed he felt he was still alive because he wanted to still be there for Rocky. Miyagi from the original Karate Kid follows with the Bronze Medal of Good. His methods were a little unusual, but he was a great teacher to Daniel and became very attached to him. He stepped in to save the young man from being beaten, and though reluctant, he did accept taking Daniel as a student so he could defend himself. He intervened again in the second film when Kreese tried attacking Daniel, leaving the rival sensei to lose his students. He's known for his use of everyday tasks being translated for defense and fighting. There's been a great deal of wise teachers and coaches that are modeled after him, and his methods were expanded on in the newer version of the film that featured the legendary Jackie Chan. Now we can't forget about Coach Carter. Can you believe this coach, played by Samuel Jackson, doesn't drop a single F-bomb throughout the movie? That shows discipline right out the gate. But more importantly, Coach Carter helps his team of high schoolers succeed not only on the basketball court, but also in the classroom. He does everything he can to ensure that his players get a real chance in life to break out of the cycle of poverty they grew up in. All through demanding hard work, respect, and lots and lots of push-ups and suicides. Frankie Dunn from Million Dollar Baby is next. When he's approached by Maggie to train her to box, he initially refuses, saying he has no interest in training a woman. But he ultimately relents when he witnesses firsthand her determination in the ring. What begins as a harsh relationship between coach and athlete eventually morphs into a connection between two talented fighters. Dunn goes from being a man cut off from life to a man that saw Maggie as the daughter he was unable to connect with before. In what is a heart-wrenching performance by Clint Eastwood and Hilary Swank, we see the depth to which a coach can care for his student. Dunn is faced with the difficult choice to help Maggie end her life after she becomes bedridden and her health declines. Burt Vickerman from Stick It earns our next spot. 
It may surprise a few of our viewers that we placed him this high on our list, but we see him as a good man with the best intentions for his students. He's known among the sport for his never say quit attitude and refused to treat his students as fragile. He knew the amount of strain and potential risks that came with the sport and never once tried to gloss over the fact that any unnecessary moves could result in permanent damage. He gained the respect of the young woman he trained and adapted to them as much as they did to him. He had a tougher time with the main protagonist Haley due to her constant need to rebel, but was able to help her channel it in more constructive ways, even showing subtle support for her and the other girls refusing to hide their bra straps when a fellow teammate was docked points for it. He's an abrasive man at times, but only because he genuinely feels that it's the best way to convey his concerns for his students and their safety. The next coach taught us that it's all in the hips. Chubbs Peterson is next. He was the man who taught Happy how to really play golf, helping the man earn enough money to save his grandmother's home. Chubbs is a nice enough man with a career full of experience under his belt, but we rank him a little lower due to the fact that while he was generous to help Happy, seeing his potential, he had no issue disregarding his actual clients. In fact, when he first meets Happy, Chubbs is ignoring a woman that paid him for his instruction. However, we don't feel he earned a lower placement since he was the only one determined to find a way to get through to Happy and make him not only successful as an athlete, but as a person, helping the golfer channel his rage into something useful. All we need to do is develop the rest of your game. Though it was sad to see Chubbs meet his end, he made a lasting impact on his last student. With that said, we've arrived at the neutral territory. These characters fall in the gray area. Irv Blitzer from Cool Runnings gets the first gray area spot. He made it clear in the beginning he didn't believe that a Jamaican bobsled team was possible and so was not a very supportive man during the beginning of their training. He did, however, know the sport well and was able to show the newly formed team the ins and outs of bobsledding. He had been disgraced for cheating, but was once a decorated athlete with two gold medals and several world records under his belt. That guy won two gold medals? He doesn't sugarcoat how dangerous the sport can be and how seriously they had to take it or else they could risk major injury or death. The Longest Yards, Paul Crew is next. Any role played by Adam Sandler is almost guaranteed to be stressful at some point. This film certainly delivered when we see Crew disgraced himself by winding up in jail after already being written off as a respected football player. When he's given the task to coach the prison football team, he is not excited for it. Hit me, I'm open. Hi, guy, hi. In the beginning, he complains about the players, the conditions of the yard, and how his players are treated by the guards and other inmates. But in this environment, he starts to see them as more brothers than pawns. He makes them hopeful about taking out the men determined to keep them down, and leads them from being a bunch of strangers looking to break up the monotony of prison to a strange family that comes to look out for one another. They join together in the face of tragedy and refuse to back down. Crew was not the best man arriving in this cutoff world, but he left it stronger than ever and helped every member of his team do the same. Jimmy Dugan from A League of Their Own, we're placing next. Telling a fictionalized version of the All-American Girls Professional Baseball League, Jimmy is portrayed as impatient and borderline negligent most of the time on screen. It was one of Tom Hanks' more unapproachable roles, with him even making one of his players burst into tears and then respond with, there's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in baseball. There's no crying in baseball! Given the time period of this film, it isn't surprising that this was new territory for everyone involved. Dugan was a man trying to navigate teaching women how to be seen as respected athletes, but he loses a lot of points for his inability to be a stable figure for the team. Upon first meeting them, Dugan stumbles in the locker room, intoxicated and going to urinate in the open without so much as a hello and then ripping up a baseball card handed to him to sign. He only really expresses interest in coaching properly when he disagrees with one of Dottie's sign-offs, competing on how to run the team. He does get the hang of it, trying to encourage the woman more and trying to reprimand them in a way that isn't demoralizing. Coach Klein earns our next spot. Another Adam Sandler movie, but this time it was Henry Winkler holding the playbook. Though for much of the film, that playbook was dysfunctional and useless. 
While he is a great character, always entertaining when on the screen, he gets a lower spot since he isn't very reliable as a team leader. Klein is insecure, having been used and left behind by his former friend and co-worker. When he comes across Bobby's ability to channel his rage, Klein focuses all of his efforts on making Bobby the center of every play. Can you do this for me? Every single game, can you do this? He was so determined, he lied to get Bobby on the team and said nothing when the lie was exposed. He encouraged Bobby to disregard his mother's concerns, though we admit she was a horrible smother mother, and he fell back into a state of depression when Bobby was not on the team, hiding in a locker to avoid the rest of the game. He does get his confidence back when Bobby returns, the young player helping him through his struggle of facing the other coach. It was nice he had a somewhat happy ending and that he did want Bobby and the other players to be successful, but he struggled a lot along the way. The coach from Blades of Glory, simply called Coach, is next on our list. Now this man seemed like a nice enough guy, so why are we placing him lower? Because the coach was driven to restore his reputation more than he was to coach Jimmy and Chaz. He initially refuses to help Jimmy get back into skating, the young athlete pointing out he was still technically allowed in the pair's division. He only relents and takes Chaz and Jimmy in when he sees the potential for himself. He presents the idea of them skating together when the men are arrested and don't have many other options for moving on. When the training does begin, he's harsh to an almost abusive degree, working Chaz to the bone to make him lose weight, putting a young Jimmy through wind tunnels and intense nutrition, and workout regulations and forcing the two to share accommodations that children would be forced into. He doesn't take much interest in their personal lives, only interested in their careers to further his own. And on top of that, he demands they learn a skating technique that has already resulted in one death, making them practice on a hunch that Chaz and Jimmy Jimmy would be able to pull it off with their combined strength. You're two men. You should be fine. We don't see much of him outside of the rink, so we can only really base our opinion of him through his work. He doesn't show much connection with Chaz or Jimmy, which says a lot considering he had trained Jimmy as a young child. Finally, we have reached the dark side. These characters are the bad and the evil. We'll keep it short and sweet. The bronze medal Evo coach goes to Red Boyu, the rival in the water boy. We've already mentioned Coach Klein, but Red was the one to ultimately put this chain of events into action. He had spent years stepping on people to get what he wanted, another victory under his belt and another boost in his reputation. He saw no issue with stealing Klein's plays and calling them his own, letting his players abuse others and bask in their feelings of superiority, or abusing Bobby and eventually firing him as he claimed the young man was an idiot and a hazard. You're fired! Okay. He thankfully fell from grace when Klein and the Mud Dogs defeated his once unbeatable team. This may sound harsh, but we feel Patches O'Houlihan is next on our list. Now, we know dodgeball isn't the most inspiring sports film out there, but this coach was just too insane to not mention. He was harsh, and that's putting it nicely. Throwing wrenches and other such things at his players is not a good way to motivate them. Any other questions? Oh my god! The only positive thing we can really say is that his methods did help them improve, but was it really worth all the bodily harm? And finally, the gold medal for evil coaches in film goes to John Kreese. Leader of the Cobra Kai Dojo, he is most known for his insistence on showing no mercy towards his opponents and taught his students the same. In the first film, he insisted on his student to sweep Daniel's leg, making an illegal attack at his knee. After Daniel overcomes the injury and wins the tournament, Kreese is enraged at the loss of status, openly attacking the young man before Miyagi intervenes. The conflict leaves Kreese without his students or life's work and leads him to become obsessed with getting revenge. In the new Cobra Kai series, it is shown he tries to learn from his past mistakes and redeem himself, but we felt his actions in the original saga were enough to place him last on our list. But what do you think? And if you liked our breakdown of sports movie coaches, make sure to go check out our sports movie villains evil to most evil video on our new Timeline Sports channel. We'd really appreciate your subscription. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the morality of the characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.